Hey everybody, it's Kathy from the pharmacy and today we are here to show you the inside of this awesome urban farm that is in a container. So you guys come inside and check out how this whole thing works. Hi. Hi, John. How Hi, are good you? morning, Kathy. Very good. Oh, I got gloves oh, on. Not... <laughs> My gloves are on, so we, we're, we got, we're working. We've got all the protective measures yeah. on to keep it clean today. So um, we're here. This is John with Living Waters Farm. Um, and we need you to show us around in this amazing indoor control graphic. environment leafy green machine. <laughs> so it's quite a title. Yes. So um, you have an amazing unit here. Well, thank you. Is how many square feet? Well, grow space is roughly about 280 square feet of growing, okay. which equals about an acre a year. So I grow in this nice. small little space about an acre a year okay. uh, in my controlled environment. I use less than two gallons of water a day and minimal electricity. And my footprint on the uh, ecology is very limited. No toxins, no poisons, no nothing is being used. And since we don't use soil, we run a very low risk of E. coli or any of those like pythium or things like that that could right. be bad for your food. Right. So, so um, and you, as you can see, grow a ton of stuff here. So can you show us a little bit about the process from sure. beginning to end and how it gets into these units sure. and how it all works? Be happy to. Great. So we start with the seeding process here, which is a horizontal normal seed process. Okay. They get put into these little plugs. These are now just getting, this week will be ready to go. And so this plug is roughly just coming up two weeks old. And what we're trying to do is just get a good root system right there. Right. So as this develops a little bit more, it's going to curl. What's, and then that will go into the tower. What, what type of material is that? That, that is a in? peat moss and a cocoa fiber. Coconut oh, cool. fiber and a peat moss wow. uh, that gets put in and squeezed. And we use this because it doesn't break down and clog up the emitters. Oh, okay. I can't use soil because soil would break down and clog the emitters. Okay. So, so then from we use here, this. this goes into these? Um, yeah, so what I do here then is it will go in the towers after two weeks in the uh, in the seedling trough. Uh -huh. uh, it will then be trans transplanted into the towers. Now the towers are a uh, soft but hard plastic. Um, the fiber is a foam fiber and then we have a cotton wick source in the middle that this is really what the roots attach to and okay. grow. Right. This is what we would call our soil. Uh -huh. So when we go for an organic uh, label, uh -huh. this is our, our soil. So that has all the healthy bacteria and all the soil components that we would have in the farm gotcha. that we keep reusing. Okay. okay? Yeah. So when we do that, then what we would do is we would take the particular plant and deciding upon what we're going to do is then just open this up and gently with without disturbing too much of the root to to limit the shock right. the transplant shock is just put that in there and put it at an angle because water will flow the direction it wants to and we don't want it to drip out of the tower right. so we put it in there and i would probably put so about nine <laughs> So cute. Yeah. You put nine on lettuce. I do nine, nine, nine lettuce in a tower. This okay. is a seven foot tower. So nine of them. And then this of course is what I just was looking at this morning to test my weights because we're getting close to a harvest. Okay. And this is the uh, romaine that I grow. This is called um, green forest. Uh -huh. And so this is a nice beautiful romaine that tastes fantastic. Would you like to try it? I would love to try it. Because I'm not in soil, we can eat it right out of the farm. So we are as good as farm to table Crisp, fresh as you awesome. can do it. Crisp, delicious. That's really, really good. Green, good oh, yeah. flavor. Imagine that it's for nice your. It's nice and dark yeah. too. It's amazing. Imagine that for your uh, Caesar salads, right? That's and amazing. I have a red one that would add color. There's also a red ro uh, romaine that I grow. And then of course here's the bu uh, the bib. This is the um, butterhead bib that I grow. Nice. And this is a fresh, buttery, crisp flavor better for your sandwiches. This is more for salads. This is nice for sandwiches and for your quick salads. You want to try this one? Sure. Tear, tear a leaf there. I'll try a leaf. Okay, so once it's in here, on the yeah. and once it's in the towers, size. well, once it gets in the towers, we're going to put it back into the field. So okay. when we go into the field, this is stuff that we're looking at. This was transplanted just last week. So it's about a week uh, in the tower. Nice. Uh, the, the radishes here were done this week and they're really taking off. Um, you know within two or three days of the transplant if they're going to go. Okay. So if I were to say... So let's show everybody how these are... So these are... These are 
these individual squares. Yeah, these towers. They're hung almost like hung, Venetian blinds or something. Yep, they hang on a little clip, and okay. then they have the emitter, water emitter up there. Would you like to see it work? Yes. Okay, so we go over to the brain here, and this is probably the one of the greatest things here is this allows me to do everything from anywhere in the world that I need to do. I can turn okay. water on, pumps on and off, I can adjust nutrients, but this is the brain of the whole machine. And so what I will do is go over here and bring up what is the, the main pump and we'll turn the main pump on. And then you'll see that this will come through. And the neat thing about this is we only use energy to get the water up above our heads. Right, Gravity like feeds right. everything else. And that end of the farm versus this end of the farm is three inches lower back here. Okay. So I am using gravity to do that. Yep. And so once it starts to drip, we're looking for this. And I water uh, like 10 minutes every hour. So okay. during the light cycle, it waters every every hour for about 10 minutes. So you have different cycles of light as well as water. We're so what, what are we on right now? We're currently at night. Okay. So everything is shut off in the night cycle right now, and so with the night cycle will come the um, cooling. We'll have cooler temperatures. Uh, we'll make sure the humidity stays controlled, and then we'll we'll shut the water and water down because it doesn't really need it at night. Okay. And then the lights will come on, and it will turn the water system back on and start doing its automation. Nice. And everything is fairly automated. Like I get to do, uh, I can farm from anywhere in the world. I'm currently traveling with my farming and it's nice to be able to check on the farm while I'm in another country. Yeah, that's so, really cool. So can you show us a different cycle? Sure. Of what, um, sure. What, what well, it's automated and let's going. take a look down the way here. You can okay. see before we do with the green, before the lights get going, you can see right here is my spinach. And this is a neat spinach called Red Kitten. Mm -hmm. Very healthy, very crunchy. Uh, down the way a little bit further is my arugula and my parsley and my herbs. And then you start getting into the lettuces and things. And we change that out. The whole farm will change over in five weeks. Wow. So every tower so will whole, move. Full growth cycle? Full growth cycle will be five weeks. And this okay. tower will be replanted in, in that cycle. Nice. Okay. And then we go by um, different brands or different uh, varieties for lettuce. Right now we're growing three lettuces, two radishes, kale, two types of kale, three types of spinach. Um, and trying to get everything just back up into full production because we just moved here. So this is a brand new location. Yeah, okay. And we're partnering with Lake Meadows Naturals as well as uh, another young lady called Kathy's Critters and that's going to be working with the APD program, the Agency with People with Disabilities. And we're hoping to bring in a vocational skill to kids that are challenged yeah. and can do this as a regular career. Awesome. I want to create careers for these kids. 18 to 22 is where we're getting the age group right now. And veterans could do this. There's a lot of different people I'm trying to bring in the workforce. Great. So, uh, like so if we go back to the brain, okay. I'll shut off the water and let it go back to automatic and then turn on the lighting system that will go. And now the lighting system turns on automatically for 20 hours a day right now. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm oh, dark for four. We need glasses for. Yeah, we will need glasses. So, at this point, these are LED glasses that you get to put on, <laughs> and now you get to see the polarization of the lights. Okay, cool. And so now you can yeah, see yeah. that everything's clicking in, and they're using just LED lighting that will stay 20 hours light and 4 hours dark because so of it. the red and blue is mimicking uh, the these, sunlight? Like these are the particular frequencies that leafy greens really like. So four red to one blue is uh -huh. the frequency challenge that the, that the plants prefer. This okay. is what they prefer to have uh, for their growth cycle. We don't really need white light, we need red and blue for leafy greens. Now some flowering plants will change that up a little, right. but as indoor agriculture is developed now, we're finding out different frequencies and tunability of the lights to grow the products even better. Right. Uh, some people will say they don't like hydroponic tomatoes, because 10 years ago when they started doing hydroponic tomatoes, they didn't have it quite right. They were learning how to do the farming, they were learning how to get it all right. right. And nowadays the uh, flavors, the textures, are much more true to the variety. And some are even more enhanced in here because it's 
like taking your vegetables to a spa and letting them grow. <laughs> I'll say, it feels like it's, a spa. In it is the perfect because environment. The temperature is amazing. Yeah, it we're seven, really nice. 70 degrees, 70% 70 so humidity. Can we walk down this way just to show kind sure. of the length of this place? Sure. Cool. The whole container is 40 feet long and it goes back to the main tanks here. This is our main tank that holds the uh, three, 300 gallons of okay. water that runs the main field. Awesome. And then I've done some modifications to keep airflow and everything kind of moving back here yeah, it feels, and doing good. Yeah, it feels really great. It's got some, some fans. And yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, so I love it. have a whole other row too. This is my harvest rack. Oh, okay. So when I'm looking to move towers, I take these down and then I hook them in here. And then with full plants, you don't have to carry. Right. And then you just push them back up to the workspace. Nice. And so we go that way. And so, like I said, since we just moved here, we're one quadrant short of a full farm. We planted the three quadrants, one, two, and three in front. And then this one will go next week. Nice. And we'll start producing lettuce and leafy greens for you. All right. And, and anyone else that wants them. <laughs> and yeah, th so you can literally drop this in uh, a desert? I can drop this in a desert. I can put it on a rooftop. Um, I can do it in a parking ramp. Um, I can do it in direct light. I can do it covered. Uh, we're running a farm in another country right now in a shed. So we actually have three farms linked together and uh -huh. they're all underneath a, a covering. Now, in Florida, I'd like to have a cover over it because right. you know the sun's such degrading. Uh -huh. But we're okay here. The um, insulation on this is six to eight inches on either side. It holds temperature so for... So it doesn't matter the outside temperature? A little bit, but yeah. not... It, I can get two days. When, when, uh, when I ran out of power for Irma, mm -hmm. uh, two days that this farm operated without any real problem. Wow. That's yeah, well, we stayed out of it. Right. You leave it closed up like your refrigerator. You, yeah. you leave it closed up and leave it, but two days, yeah. and it operates. So that's amazing. Yeah, and it did really well. So cool. I was very and happy with so it. So the big question is, can you grow this unit? Use this to grow things in space. Uh, I think so. <laughs> I think that if you, if you seal it, if uh -huh. you seal the the the, the container, uh -huh. this is space age technology. You bet. Awesome. Um, the Musk Brothers, uh, Kimball Musk, owns 10 of these farms mm -hmm. uh, that are called the Leafy Green Machine in New, the New Jersey area. And um, yeah, they're looking into the technology that they would take, but awesome. seal it up. So when we all move to Mars. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Let's go. Um, we will be eating well Yeah, there. <laughs> and, and you know, we just have to get the gravity things right. There's yeah. NASA yeah, still the doing that. Yeah, watering might be a little tricky. Yeah, you know. could be. <laughs> uh, on the moon or on Mars, it'd be okay, but in yeah. in orbit, and right. it floats. It's a little bit harder, and they're they're working through that. Awesome. But but um, it's one of those things that the technology is so good, and the food is so clean that we're environmentally friendly here on Earth. I right. mean, my I I I've talked to different um, uh, county uh, extensions, and they know that my chemicals are not dangerous, so I can actually put them in the soil and feeding the grass actually. Right. Um, I use less than 300 gallons in two months and my energy bill is probably the biggest footprint that I have. Right. So. Which I'm sure even that is minimal since these are like yeah. LED and yeah. all that, you yep. know. It's, compared it's, to, it's, to other, other oh, yeah. farm consumption. Compared to so. other growers that would yeah. use the sodiums and mm -hmm. the other big old bulb technology. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I don't have to do any diesel fuel for my tractors. Uh, yeah, so true. I have a much better footprint on the the uh, industry for the fuels that you would burn up, the awesome. fossil fuels. So. Well, um, we really enjoyed this tour today. So I'll move my glasses. <laughs> Thank you so much for You're your welcome. time, John. It's good to see you. Great to see we'll you. We'll have Thank product you. for you soon. We look so forward look forward to it. Look forward, look forward on their shelf, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour. If you want to find out more, we'll have some information um, in the in the links in the description below.